Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My brothers, my sisters, many people find it difficult to turn back to the Almighty after they have led a life filled with sin. And shaitan has a plan that he thinks works. And sometimes out of our ignorance, we fall into his trap. So at the beginning, he wants us to transgress. So we start committing the sins one after the other. You know, when you sin and you regret it, then that's a good sign. Regret is only a sign because you believe that Allah or someone is, you, you know, uh, going to hold you responsible for what you're doing. So you regret it. And there comes a time when you commit the sin again and again, when you don't regret it anymore, you don't think about it. And then it becomes major. And this is why when you commit minor sins for a long time, it actually becomes major sin. So Shaitan comes and makes you commit these sins. So now you're away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah gives you reminders every other day, different ways, whether it's a health matter, whether it's something social, whether it's uh, whatever your economics, whatever else might be situation that is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tap you on the shoulders. Hey, you need to turn. You cannot continue leading your life in this way. You cannot oppress people. You cannot harm and hurt others. You cannot forget about us. So that's the mercy of Allah. Then you want to turn back to Allah. But shaitan keeps telling you, no, you're not good enough. You've committed the biggest sins. Your sins are too big. You've committed adultery. You've gambled. You've been on intoxicants. You've actually done whatever there is in the book to be committed in terms of sin. Astaghfirullah. So shaitan tells you, no hope for you. Listen to what Allah says in Surah Az-Zumar. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Don't ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. He will forgive every single sin of yours. He is most forgiving, most merciful. That is Allah speaking to you and I. Subhanallah. Allah says, Oh, you who have transgressed against yourselves. That's what Allah is telling us. So remember, when Allah says, don't lose hope in my mercy. Now shaitan comes. He's very upset. He had you in his clutch. You were sinning. He was excited. He was proving a point to Allah. You see, I told you these guys are not going to worship you. They're going to worship me. Now when you're turning to Allah, he's losing grip. And so he comes to you and says, you're not good enough. You're not going to be forgiven. So as you seek that forgiveness, there comes a time when he makes you start thinking, you have not been forgiven. Did you know my brothers and sisters? The first time you seek forgiveness from a sin, if you've done it sincerely, you repenting, you regret it and you don't want to commit it again, that sin is wiped out. When? The first time you seek forgiveness, it's already wiped out. Look at Adam alayhi salam. Him and Eve, may peace be upon them. Hawa alayhi salam. When they ate from the tree, it was the only thing Allah told them not to do. They did it. When they did that, they just told Allah, Oh Allah, we regret it and we seek your forgiveness. If you don't forgive us, we're going to be from among the losers. Allah says, I've forgiven you. Subhanallah. As straightforward as that. They asked for it once. And they had committed a major sin and they asked forgiveness and Allah forgave them. And Allah says, didn't I warn you about the devil? They said, we know, but we, we were wrong and we're sorry and we apologize and we repent and so on. Allah says, it's okay, forgiven. Now you can go on to the earth and this is what should happen. Whenever someone has faulted, they should seek my forgiveness. So we are just human. Don't be too hard on yourself. Don't think you're not going to be forgiven. You will falter, not out of the defiance of Allah you will falter out of human nature, weakness. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, never let your past haunt you to the degree that it hinders your relationship with Allah. That is something. Never let your past haunt you to the degree that you don't believe in the mercy of Allah or you don't understand who is Allah. You're dealing with Rabbun Ghafoorun Rahimun Wadudun, MashaAllah. You're dealing with Rahman as Samawati wal Ard wa Rahimahuma. You're dealing with the most merciful, the most compassionate, the most kind, the most forgiving, the most merciful, etc., etc. The one whose mercy is incomparable to anyone or anything. The one who would have more mercy on you than your mother could have ever had mercy upon you. That is Allah. When you tell him, oh Allah, forgive me, it is wiped out. So we keep on repeating that 
tawbah or we keep on asking for forgiveness again and again, not because we are doubting that he has or has not forgiven us. We should know he has forgiven us. Conviction, convinced, smile and move on, subhanallah. But we repeat it in order to develop a better relationship with Allah. Oh Allah, I'm so sorry. You know when you love someone, you've uh, hurt them or harmed them, they love you too. And you say, look, I'm very sorry for what I said the other day. And they say, no, nah, it's okay, don't worry, forgiven, forgotten, and let's not talk about it. A day later, you say, hey, it's hurting me, you know, I'm so sorry. What I, they say, I told you it's okay. A day later, you tell them, but I'm still thinking about it, you know, it pains me how I spoke to you or what I said. And they say, no, 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 it's fine. Why are you repeating it? Because there is a sense of true regret. So when you repeat it, it should make you feel good. It's a sign you have a good relationship with Allah. Not that you're doubting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a beautiful relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the whole reason why you are continually seeking forgiveness and Allah elevates your status more and more. Then there are some sins we don't even know we've committed. Those are automatically forgiven when you do good deeds. The Quran says, when you do good deeds, they automatically wipe out minor sin, the, the bad deeds that are minor, that you might not even know of, or you may have known about them, but they are small sins. But we are talking of massive sins, the big sins. Yes, you engaged in all of that intoxicants and whatever it may have been, and you did this and did that. You know what? The one who seeks forgiveness from a sin is equivalent to he or she who did not commit the sin in the first place. And Allah says, if you change your life after you led a bad life solely for my sake, I'm going to go back into your records and convert all the bad into good because you only quit it because of your love of me, your relationship with me. Subhanallah. So, if you want your bad deeds to be changed into good deeds, the condition is after repentance, you must actually change your life, your ways, and you must do good deeds. Then Allah will go back, take those bad deeds and convert them into good. But if you have just sought forgiveness at that juncture, your sins are wiped out. Now we have a little problem. The problem is when you commit a sin, Allah judges you by your repentance and not by the sin. If you have repented, good news. If you haven't, bad news. So seek forgiveness and constantly seek forgiveness of Allah and have hope in the mercy of Allah. You are just a human. Don't be too hard on yourself. Don't ever think Allah is not merciful because that is a bigger sin than the original sin that you committed because when you committed the adultery or when you committed the sin that you did, whether it was in participating or partaking of intoxicants, etc., etc., that was a sin you committed against Allah, yet you knew who Allah was. Right now, when you're doubting the mercy of Allah, you're doubting Allah. So you're now not even knowing who you're talking to. And you're not, know, you're not understanding the greatness of this Lord who has created you and loves you and wants goodness for you. The Quran says, وَاللَّهُ يُرِيدُ أَن يَتُوبَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَيُرِيدُ الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ الشَّهَوَاتِ أَن تَمِيلُوا مَيْلًا عَظِيمًا Allah says, Allah wants to forgive you. Allah's aim is to forgive you. That's the whole reason why he put man on earth. Because on one hand, he has the angels who don't commit sin at all. They don't have the capacity to commit sin. And on the other hand, you have the devil who, who does not seek forgiveness because he sins out of defiance of Allah. It's like he tells Allah, you told me to prostrate. I'm not going to do that. What are you going to do about it? Astaghfirullah, we as insan, humankind, believers would never do that. So you have the devil on one hand, the angels on the other. We are in the middle. We commit sin out of human weakness, but we come back to Allah. And how often should we come back to Allah? Every day. When will we sin? We may sin at any time. Shaitan can come and try and trap us. The beauty is, if you've been following shaitan for 70 years and one day you shed a warm tear of repentance, it wipes out 70 years of sin. Remember that. So no matter what you've done and how long you've led a life away from the Almighty, a moment of truth will bring you straight back, back on track and you have a lovely relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah judges you based on your repentance, not on your sin. But man will judge you based on your sin. 
This is where the difficulty comes. People belittle us. They remember us for the bad we did. They think that we haven't changed our lives. They think we are hypocrites. Unfortunately, that's some of the negativity we may have to live with. But remember, your relationship with Allah is unique. It is a gift of Allah for us. You and I seek forgiveness to Allah. I don't need to confess any sin to anyone besides Allah. Remember that. When we confess sins to humankind, we will regret it because they will not really and truly forgive us. It's only Allah who really and truly forgives you. If it's a minor sin against someone, they may, but usually man does not forgive. And they always do not forgive as readily as Allah forgives. And this is why if you've committed a sin in marriage, your spouse may never forgive you, subhanAllah. But Allah will forgive you even if it was something that broke your marriage. Allah will wipe it out and grant you elevation. Your spouse didn't, they broke the marriage, but they didn't realize had they perhaps forgiven you and embraced you, you would have come back with a stronger bond than ever before. Just like those who return to Allah after leading a life of sin come back with a bang. They come back with a more powerful relationship with Allah. But those who were always Muslim or they were always in obedience, sometimes they don't know how valuable it is to, to taste those uh, moments of repentance when you've turned back to Allah and you feel so clean. May Allah grant us that cleanliness. Why do you feel good when you cry? When you cry to Allah because it, the sins actually are washed away by your tears. That's why the hadith says, Subhanallah, a person who remembers Allah while they're alone and they remember Allah alone and they remember the relationship between them and Allah and their, uh, their eyes are filled with tears. That person deserves a special shade on the day of judgment according to what Allah has told us. The tear has not yet rolled down your eyes. The eye has just filled up with tears and that's enough for Allah. Some people, they, they, they want to cry, but the tear doesn't roll down the cheek, but it fills the eyes. For Allah, that's good enough. If it rolls down your cheek, subhanAllah, then Allah speaks about those in a few places in the Quran and he praises them. Imagine the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and others, they were mushriks before. They committed a sin that Allah says he will not forgive if you die in that condition. So he forgives all sins if you repent from them. But if you die in the condition of not having repented, then there are certain things he says, I'll forgive everything and anything I want to forgive. But the, if it is shirk, I don't want to forgive that. So that's a warning for us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, don't engage in this. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum prior to Islam engaged in that. When they accepted Islam, you know what the hadith says, Inna al-Islam ma qabla. The same words used for tawbah. When you accept Islam, when you say your shahada, all your bad deeds are wiped out, totally deleted, formatted in a beautiful way. So your bad deeds are gone. Just like when you seek the forgiveness of Allah, your bad deeds are wiped out. Just like when you go for hajj and it's accepted from Allah, your bad deeds are wiped out. Now change your life. Change your life and make sure you lead a life filled with smile, filled with joy. Don't forget you're a human. You might falter here and there. You will have to commit a sin or two. None of us can say we've never committed a sin. We've never made mistakes. We've never done something wrong because shaitan is around all the time coming and trying to turn us away from Allah. If you've gone on the wrong path for a while, come back to Allah. He will open your doors. He will grant you that goodness. That is Allah. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. So my beloved brothers and sisters, no matter what you've done, come back to Allah. You may have committed sins, no matter what they were. Now, if the sin was committed between you and a fellow human, say for example, you committed adultery or say, I'm going to give you an example of rape. You've raped someone. May Allah protect us. What will happen? There are two elements here. There is the right of a fellow human being that Allah says, I won't get involved in. It's up to them to forgive you. And there is a right of Allah. Allah told you not to do it. You did it. That part of it, Allah says, I will forgive you that part. But you have to sort the matter out with the fellow human being. So you go to them, you apologize to them, or you face the punishment. Whatever the punishment is, if that person doesn't want to forgive you, then you have to face the punishment. Now, Allah has kept it such, this is an amazing point, that every punishment is proportionate to the sin. 
But human beings don't believe that sometimes. Allah says, if you committed a sin worth 500 grams, your punishment will be 500 grams. If you committed a sin worth a ton, your punishment will be worth a ton. That's what Allah says. But you cannot have a person who just swore someone, so now you execute them. No. You cannot have a person who perhaps stole something, so now you execute them. No. No. The punishment needs to be proportionate to the crime committed. Nowadays, people have the cancel culture where they've probably got screenshots of some uh, maybe uh, messages that are not even proven that one person wrote to another person from a distance or said something. And as a result, human beings are such that they will actually mete out a punishment way beyond proportion. So the, maybe the person deserves a reminder. Maybe they did something wrong. They may need to apologize. Perhaps it might even be fake or false. We don't even know. But the cancel culture actually makes people depressed. And then they don't mind. Cancel this person. Whether the person is now de depressed to the degree that they have committed suicide in some cases. Or they're contemplating. Is it really what that sin they committed would actually warrant? Do you really think they deserve to have suicidal thoughts simply because they told a little lie in their lives or a big lie in their lives? Uh, I'm not saying it was, it was uh, you know, I'm not belittling the sin, but I'm telling you proportion. I'm trying to speak here about the proportion. So you need to understand what did this person do? You know, when a person steals, we don't ever blame the one whom the item was stolen from, but sometimes we might want to look at why was this motor vehicle open? Why were the windows open? I mean, this person stole the phone from the passenger seat. When your windows were open, we're going to punish him. But surely it's our duty to remind you, hey, please close your windows, man. Subhanallah, that's a powerful point. A lot of crimes are committed and we will only blame the criminal. But we will continue to remind the victim to say, take precaution. Why do we get excited when someone reminds you to say, hey, Take precautions. What precautions did you take? Why were you at such a place? Imagine there is a den of thugs and you decide, well, I'm walking through this den. And people told you, don't, you'll get robbed. And you say, no, I'm walking through there. Nothing will happen. And you walk through there and you're robbed. And then you want to claim like there is no role that you played in this thing. Come on. Weren't you told? Weren't you warned? Well, Allah has warned us about so many things. And he's told us, be careful. Follow these rules, these regulations. If you don't, you're going to pay a price. We don't. And then when we want to pay a price, it's like we were not to blame. Well, maybe we agree the criminal is to blame. But surely the reminder was good for you. You know, you need to tell yourself, I could have done a bit better than this. I could have locked my home. I could have actually closed my windows. I could have used an alarm. I could have had a CCTV. I could have kept myself a little bit better. I'm not saying the criminal is innocent, but I'm saying save yourself, protect yourself. That's what Allah says. So now, when a person has committed a sin that is between them and a fellow human being, there is a, an element of Allah in it because Allah was the one who told you not to do it in the first place. Allah may forgive you for that part, but the other part, like I said, you need to seek the forgiveness. If they don't forgive you, the punishment is meted out. If the punishment is meted out, you're actually clean even in the world. So now I want to address people who are welcoming those who have come out of prison. My brothers and sisters who are incarcerated right now, if you're listening to me, we love you. We know you might have made a mistake. We know some of you are totally innocent and the law found you guilty because of loopholes or whatever other reason false witness is rampant in today's world. So you may be innocent, but when you come out after serving a sentence, we're here to welcome you. We're here to reintroduce you back into community and give you another chance. That's what we're here for. So Alhamdulillah, the same applies. When a person has been on drugs or has had led a life that was very dark, when they come back, come on guys, we have to give them a chance. We have to embrace them, try them out, give them a little bit of a chance. Anyone could have gone wrong. And if you were to cancel them, you have lost humanity. Humankind, we shouldn't be canceling people over some mistake they've made. We can warn them and we can punish them. We have the right to actually get the punishment served against them if it is deserved. It's our right if they've committed a wrong against us. But to cancel them in totality, it could have been you, your sibling, your spouse, your child, your parent, whoever. 
It could have been a loved one. What about that person? Do they not have loved ones? Are they not human? You know, why should we torture others to that degree where because of one thing they did wrong? I've had people who've committed affairs in marriage and lost the marriage. They were then separated or divorced. That person is remorseful. Allah will forgive them. You don't rub it forever and ever. This person committed an affair because there are so many out there who have committed affairs and continue to do it. And for some reason, they were not exposed. But when Allah exposes you, sometimes it's because he loves you and he wants the negativity to stop. So say, for example, a person is uh, having an affair. When they're exposed to the spouse, my beloved spouses, it's not always because Allah wants you to break your marriage. It's probably because Allah loves that spouse so much. He wanted you to find out so that he could stop the rubbish or she could stop the sin. And after you found out it stopped, isn't that the mercy of Allah? Well, I always say when people say, should I break my marriage or shouldn't I? I say to them, listen very carefully. If that person was evil and bad and they were not a good person, then this is your opportunity to get out of that marriage. But if that person was really good, really kind, there's a lot of goodness and they made a mistake. Perhaps you, you will be better off if you forgave them and embrace them. And I know this advice some communities might say it's not applicable but wallahi living in a free world today shaitan is very very strong in his traps i'd rather forgive someone who's committed an error and i know we have a better relationship than live with someone whom i don't even know how hypocritical they are and they're committing worse crimes day and night it's just that i don't know about it may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us you know man is not hurt by something he or she doesn't know. The minute you know, even though it was happening for 10 years and you were so excited throughout the 10 years, you found out in those five minutes, you are so uneasy that you can die of a heart attack. That's man. We're so weak. Allah says, خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا Man has been created so weak. So weak, we can't even think sometimes. We cannot put things into perspective. So, don't let your past haunt you and don't haunt other people because of their past. Whoa, that's a very powerful statement. Don't let your past haunt you and don't haunt other people because of their past. If they've changed, come on, embrace them. I've known of people whom their nude images and videos have found their way online. Astaghfirullah. It's really difficult. I've spoken about it in a separate video. But you know what? Is there hope for those people? Yes, there is. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. We are here to help you, to help you out of that mess. We are definitely here to empower you, to show you that you have a Lord who loves you. You will pay a little price because of that thing happening to be there. If you chopped your hand and then you realize, oh, I did something wrong. Oh, Allah, forgive me. He will forgive you, but you'll have to live with a chopped hand for the rest of your life. Perhaps, unless Allah gives you the opportunity to have an artificial hand. People may not notice. Unfortunately, people are not as forgiving as Allah. So my brothers and sisters, don't let the comments of people bog you down. I remember a brother recently, he wasn't even sinful, but he was blamed for something he did not do. And he was canceled because of something he did not even participate in. He didn't stand for th those values that he was being canceled for. But at the same time, the world was so merciless, so merciless. Allah is merciful. My brothers and sisters, I call on you to think very carefully as much as we would like to support the victims. We need to understand the perpetrator is also a human being and we will definitely punish them if needed or we will call for their punishment if needed but only to the proportion of the sin. Don't go beyond that because that becomes reverse crime. It becomes reverse crime when you want to punish a person beyond what they actually deserve for the sin they committed. In that case, it's reverse crime. Subhanallah. And who knows, Allah might hold you responsible for that reverse crime and that person may die and enter paradise. And who knows what's going to happen to you if you're unable to answer to Allah. Why did you penalize this person to the degree that they committed suicide or their life was totally messed? So we need to strike the balance. I am supporting the victims, hands down. But I'm also saying the perpetrators, we need to help them. We need to perhaps re-educate them. We need to counsel them. We need to uh, perhaps rehabilitate them and reintroduce them into society. Give them a chance. If you look at today, people who've committed crimes sometimes, sins sometimes, 
It depends what, what sin it is, to be honest. But the way they are punished is so bad that sometimes these people have a lot to offer society and community and they are totally cancelled and all the good they ever stood for is completely gone. Is that fair? Is it really fair? When Allah says on the day of judgment, we're going to weigh your deeds. If you have more good than bad, you're a good person, we'll give you paradise. If you have more bad than good, you're going to pay because your bad is too much and your good is too little. But there are some people whose good is tremendous on earth because they made one mistake, they're wiped out completely. That's man. It's our weakness, my brothers, my sisters. I hope we can strike a balance in this regard. So this talk was all about not letting your past haunt you and not haunting others because of their past. Remember to be proportionate when you're calling for justice. It should not be beyond the point that is deserved. And at the same time, Allah says, if the victim is willing to forgive, that is something that is very, very encouraging. And for as long as we know that this particular perpetrator is not going to commit this again and they're remorseful. And like I say, it depends what sin it is. In Islam, when someone's committed murder, if the family of the one who was murdered actually pardons the murderer, they would be pardoned in the eyes of Allah. That's what Allah says. And as for forgiveness in the eyes of Allah, your paradise is not compromised. If you seek the forgiveness of Allah and you have served the punishment in this world when you've committed a sin against another person, then your paradise is not compromised. Allah will keep it for you. And Allah knows the struggles. Allah knows we will be shocked. When we arrive on the day of judgment, some people whom we thought were innocent will be so guilty and some whom we thought were guilty would be so innocent and some whom we thought were guilty and were penalized because they were over penalized, we are going to see them floating in their glories. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So there are people, someone was telling me talk about this and talk about this person and that person. I don't know the exact details of their stories, so it would be wrong for me to mention names. But I do know my brothers and sisters go easy on others and at the same time stand up for victims. Sometimes people have agendas and some people could be actually, you know, uh, maybe faking what has happened to them. It's possible. That is a possibility. Although we take claims seriously always, but we will study it and we will see whether it has evidence and whether it has weight because there are false accusations from the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and even before that. So the possibility of being falsely accused is also there. We have to consider it while taking the allegation seriously because we don't want to make a mistake of sidelining a victim, that would be absolutely dangerous. I think I've spoken a lot. It's a long video. I haven't made such long videos in a while, but here goes. I love you all and I pray that anyone who's committed a sin is actually empowered by what we've said today to repent to Allah and to have hope. You will be as clean as the day you were born and even cleaner because it's only the bad that is wiped out, the good is never wiped out. But when it comes to your, your uh, sins that you have committed against fellow humans, you'll have to make a little bit of peace with them and remember they may not forgive you. Inshallah, tomorrow I'd like to talk about tattoos and a few other things that really have a place within uh, repentance and within Islamic teachings for or against I will get to that but I want to speak about what to be done when you've done something that you cannot really reverse and you want the mercy of Allah may Allah bless you all assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh